Hi, my name is Sandy Baird, and I'm here with our monthly current events show called What's Going On. And this month, we are here with Kurt Maida, often here, to comment on the current situation in the world. And today, we're going to be talking about the other election, Brazil 2022, because as important as our midterm elections were and are and still playing out, there was another very important election which took place in Latin America's biggest country, and that was Brazil. So I'm here today with Kurt to discuss that election, the results, and the significance for the world and particularly for the Americas. So Kurt, what's going on? Okay, Sandy. Uh, good to see you again. You too. Uh, so we have a, or we should have a map of South America be right behind us. I'm just going to briefly point out, in case folks don't know, uh, Brazil here, by far the largest country in S South America, Latin America, and uh, uh, the uh, fifth largest uh, country in the world, population-wise, and the sixth largest uh, economy in the world. It's a member of BRICS, uh, which is an acronym for Britain. I mean, I'm no. sorry, Britain. <laughs> no. Okay, <laughs> not by far. That was a faux pas. Uh, uh, Brazil, the first country. Uh, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Uh, South Africa. Right, and right. And maybe now Argentina. There is, is a rumor going around, right, Sandy. Argentina Sa Sandy's still us about. But we'll talk about BRICS in a minute. First yeah. of all, I want to sort of distinguish what we mean when we're talking about Latin America in the first place. Yeah. Okay. What I mean, I think, when I'm talking about Latin America is really the other part of the Americas that speak a Romance language rather than English. Right. And in Brazil, the language is Portuguese. Portuguese, right. Not Spanish. The not rest Spanish. of South America is Spanish-speaking, except for those places up there, it's Suriname, French. Guyana, but and, Gu and Guyana itself. And Guyana, yeah. Yeah. but in general, that is Latin America speaking a Romance language, and also I think being Catholic. Right. The two marks of the of Latin America, including interestingly enough, in my mind, Quebec. Quebec. As opposed to the rest of right. Canada, which is Anglophone. Right, right, and Louisiana a little bit. And Louisiana. We, yeah. Well, a lot of parts of the United States are Spanish speaking. Sure. But those are all kind of eliminated right. with the Mexican War, I believe in 1847, when, War. The, when the Anglophone versions yeah. of the United States pushed out the Spanish Empire. Is right. that right? That's correct. Okay, That's correct. so in other words, but this remains Latin America, quite different than. What is what uh, the United States? Right, right. North America, more North you know, uh, British North influenced. Ameri United States and Canada. And Canada. But not Mexico. Right. Okay. Right. So, but that's what we mean. So this is part of Brazil, biggest country in South America. Yeah. And maybe, and you said the fifth largest in the world. In the world. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Portuguese speaking, Roman Catholic, and containing the Amazon. Correct. Correct. And that's an important feature. Yeah. Of this election, right? Yeah. Right. So speaking of. Areas that are not Portuguese speaking. Yeah, the Amazon, we have, where there are a number of uh, indigenous tribes that live there. Uh, they don't speak, and they don't speak. Portuguese. No, they don't, they don't speak Portuguese or Spanish. They speak their indigenous languages, and some of which uh, have absolutely no contact with the outside world yeah. at all. And there's still uh, a belief that there, there have been tribes that have never even been contacted yet at all. There's uh, so many of them, or that what? There are so many of them. Or they're so secluded. But, but so secluded, so many of them, but vastly, unfortunately, disappearing uh, because of deforestation issues in the Amazon. Uh, so let's let's, let's talk get back about to the, the election. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we uh, so the country of Brazil, uh, aside from our midterms, uh, the country of Brazil had a very big election, which was. Could I ask one? So Brazil is a republic, also. That correct? is correct. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they have a presidential system, mm -hmm. uh, not unlike ours. Hours and, and a vice president that has uh, the election system is uh, essentially every four years mm -hmm. they have national elections like ours. The president and vice president uh, can be up for two terms o only, only like ours. However, if there is a separation mm -hmm. after the two terms have been served of an, an intervening president, one right yeah. or two, mm -hmm. uh, that person who won 
the uh, the the election the first time, uh -huh. the first two times, they can actually run again. Uh huh. Unlike ours. Unlike our, right. uh, ours. Yeah, right. we're we're limited to two terms, and that's it. So potentially in this uh, in in Brazil, you can run uh, a number of times. And again. there have been uh, in Brazil and in many parts of South America dictatorships. Correct. Brazil had one right up right. until the 1980s. Which means what exactly? That they had to this dictator had total control. Essentially, it was a military dictatorship, okay. so the military called the shots on everything. Uh -huh. So they would put up civilian leaders, but they were under the guise uh, and approval of the uh, of the military. Okay. And that was that ended, however. That did end in the 1980s. Okay. Yeah. So and but let's talk now about the current election. Right. The current the uh, sitting president at the time was Bolsonaro. Yeah, uh, Jair Bolsonaro. Mm -hmm. uh, very popular and very controversial leader. Uh, he won by a lot, though, correct? He lost. Bolsonaro no, lost no, no, not this in time. This election, the first time. Correct. In 2000, I believe it was uh, 13. Uh -huh. He ran and uh, he 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 did win. He was uh, it was a different type of leadership uh, that he demonstrated during his his uh, his rule, his administration. Uh, it was a conservative, right leaning. Conservative right leaning, right? Yeah. He, though mm -hmm. his uh, his political party was known as the Social Liberals, mm -hmm. he was anything but. Mm -hmm. uh, he his interest in the foreign policy uh, realm was to uh, develop a stronger relationship with the United States and uh -huh. to institute pro market for reforms. Pro capitalist. Pro capitalist, right. yeah, reforms. Uh, he was criticized the world around in terms of his. Uh, uh, efforts and his lack of effort on some, in some respect to protect the Amazon mm -hmm. jungle, which is he was, he was perceived as a Trumpist too, wasn't he? he? Close ally of Donald absolutely, Trump. yeah, um. yeah. He was a strong uh, and I within the realm of a democracy. But I'm using the term authoritarian, but I mean it was. But he was elected. But he was elected as a Democrat. Mm -hmm. he, he, so, but regardless of that, uh, he he strongly favored central power, increasing powers of the president. Presidency, mm -hmm. uh, so you know the international press often referred to him as an authoritarian type leader. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to confuse anyone. Yeah, Brazil is is a demo democracy, and he and was he, elected. And he was elected, just like Trump was elected. And and but and he uh, and it appears that he's uh, handing over power to Lula da Silva, the uh, right. the uh, the one who prevailed in this last election and who was president of Brazil from 2003 to 2000. 2010. Okay, so Bolsonaro was a strong nationalist. That is correct. Very pro U.S. Very pro U.S., which is very different from right. prior administrations in okay, Brazil. Okay, well, explain that a bit. Well, because that seems to be a big division in Latin American politics right. between those parties which favor more. Uh, trade and so forth and more pro-U.S. Um, policies, correct? That's correct. But I, I mean, I want to um, unpack the statement that yeah. you made. Uh, da Silva, the, the new president, right, and Lula. who was Lula da Silva, who and who also uh, was president between 2003 and 2010, uh, he brought up the economy between 2003 and 2010 significantly through trade. To uh, trade. Through trade, yeah. At that time, Time, uh, China had an ex inexhaustible appetite for iron ore, for Brazilian soybeans, for oil that had just been found in Brazil, and for meat. Uh, the Chinese diet is changing a little bit. Uh, Seems so. Yeah, and uh, during that time frame, Brazil Brazil had all of these. So Brazil, during Lula's administration, Lula, the new president, also now, uh, in between 2003 and 2010, the economy of Brazil shot up from being 14th ranked in the world in terms of GDP to sixth, which is substantial. Oh, wow. yeah, and in the yeah, process, yeah, yeah. Lula was able to institute a number of uh, social welfare programs that brought about 30 million uh, Brazilians out of extreme pro poverty, which was a which was a major undertaking. Sure. Uh, yeah, those are but some big numbers. He was then a true leftist. He was a, tr uh, he was interested a true leftist. Interested in social welfare, interested yeah. in economic programs to aid 
to lift people out of poverty. Right, That's and what, yeah. and at the same time, simultaneously lifting Brazil's uh, own economy and right. it's standing in the in the uh, in the international uh, arena. All right, so then he's defeated then by Bolsonaro. No, he wasn't defeated. Oh. So he served oh, out his... Right, right, right. Yeah, he, uh, De Silva, according to the Brazilian Constitution, served out his two terms. He left with an 80% uh, approval rating, mm -hmm. which is quite high in, in anywhere in the yeah, developing anywhere, world. Yeah. Anywhere in the developing world. Anywhere or here. Any, Actually, these days, yeah, anywhere. anywhere yeah. Right, right. So he left with an 80% approval rating. Uh, he was succeeded by a, um, a cabinet minister named Dilma. Yes, right, right, uh, right. She was essentially handpicked, and also she was the first uh, first female president of Brazil. It's important to note. Uh, so she uh, ran. And she was a leftist too. She was a leftist. Yeah. She was handpicked by De Silva, yeah, by right. Lula De Silva. Lula's yeah. the name that you'll hear in the in the press more yeah. common than his uh, last name. Uh, and she uh, did not enjoy the same level of. Um, adulation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that that Lula enjoyed. Uh, the economy started slowing down as China's uh, economy started slowing down a little bit mm -hmm. and therefore the need for some of the items that Brazil had for trade purposes, China was able to further diversify their economy and get these uh, items from different sources, different mm -hmm. places in the world. Uh, so Brazil took a little bit of a hit during that time frame. And then Rousseff, Dilma Rousseff, was succeeded by Jair Bolsonaro, who we're talking about as being a little bit more right-leaning and pro-U.S. She was also impeached, wasn't she? She, I'm not, I'm not certain. I think was accused yeah. somehow of corruption, but anyway, yeah. so. But well, there was a lot of corruption in uh, alleged during Dilma Rousseff's administration, right. which actually, unfortunately, led for, unfortunately for Lula, led back to Lula da Silva. Uh huh. Uh, and Lula da Silva was actually in prison right. for 17 months right. under corruption charges. Mm -hmm. The allegations were that. Uh, he he got a condo and some big renovations uh, in his in his beach home for companies that in exchange you know got government contracts so those were the allegations he was actually incarcerated for 17 months it was a 22 year sentence ah. uh, but then he was able to appeal and a judge uh, throughout the original sentence wow. so he was released from prison and, and then ran and and he was essentially the charges were the initial charges were also dismissed otherwise he would have been uh, unable to right. run for president again right. I wonder who uh, dismissed it That's uh, it was a, a, they, were, they were able to demonstrate that the initial judge had some political biases mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that were against uh, Lula's interests so he then runs again he runs again and lo and behold uh, there was essentially he he prevailed by about two percentage points in the uh, first round of elections. Mm -hmm. There's only supposed to be one, one round, but when the uh, the the difference between the winner and the loser is so minute, mm -hmm. as in this case, they had a second round in uh, of elections in Brazil mm -hmm. for for president, for specifically a president, and and he eked out another victory again small, small. under two percentage points. Uh, Mm -hmm. Very small. Now, the kicker is that the Congress of Brazil. So, so this leftist leftist is coming back to become president. However, the Congress is. Uh, largely uh, made up of Bolsonaro's ah. social liberal party. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have classic gridlock, as we know, in, U in the U.S., in Brazil, where you have one party controlling uh, the, uh, the legislature, and then you have a leftist president, a rightist legislature with a leftist president. So Lula's going to have uh, a great deal of difficulty governing and instituting a lot of the programs that he wants to institute because Brazil has actually gone back in in terms of uh, its poverty lifting program that he instituted between 2003 in and words, 2010. It's poor -er. A lot of people have uh, COVID had a, a devastating oh. impact on Brazil, right. uh, not only on its population but uh, in terms of its economy. So uh, the platform that Lula ran on wasn't to take Brazil to the next step uh, from where he left off in 2010, which is you know, maybe going from the sixth largest economy to the fifth to the fourth, mm -hmm. but it's, he's promising three meals a day.
So and that's, that's not occurring in Brazil at this moment, I guess, huh? Pardon me? It's not occurring. People are not eating three meals a day. Well, uh, he, he did eke out a victory, so I guess there is, uh, you know, there is a little bit of that, you know, a chicken in any pot, yeah, every right. pot, like, you know, Roosevelt promised in the uh -huh. 30s. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, things, are, things are rough in Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, Bolsonaro uh, instituted a lot of um, reforms, pro-market reforms. What do you mean by that? Well, Free uh, trade? Yeah, free trade, also lessening the social welfare programs that were put into place uh, by by Lula mm -hmm. between 2003 and 2010. Uh, and uh, if you combine that with with COVID and some of the uh, the changes in China's uh, raw material needs, uh, Brazil took a a hit mm -hmm. at the last moment prior to the election. And they consider this, you know, largely trying to appeal to the masses, Bolsonaro tried to institute a number of uh, pro-poverty reforms. Mm -hmm. It should be noted, so he was promising $115 a month for every low-income family uh, in the country. 115 well, remember, I, I know, mean... I know, there's a difference in economic yeah, standards. Yeah, it's different in economic standards. We yeah. can't compare that to right. the U.S. Right. Uh, but uh, now, Lula has running, was also running on not only three meals a day, but also increasing that $115 a month supplement with $30 per child. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to accomplish that, he's going to have to increase the uh, increase the federal spending uh, cap mm -hmm. that exists in Brazil. Uh, as people may know, in our country, you know, we that becomes a contentious time exactly. in American politics when we want to raise uh, federal spending limits. And the assertion is that Brazil doesn't have that money. Mm -hmm. uh, it would cost about $13 billion to mm -hmm. accomplish that, and that will be a real challenge. But right. I want to talk. You know, I think yeah. we wanted to talk a little bit more about the uh, the external impact of well, what this means. Well, I wanted to talk too about the impact on the United States and on the world. This is a very big country, and yes. at first, I would guess that liberals, at least in the United States, would welcome Lula, but and maybe President Biden. But it's a mixed bag, isn't it? It is a mixed bag. Okay, so yeah. I want to talk a little bit about that mixed bag. Yeah. Like BRICS. What is BRICS, and what is that significance? of this election for uh, the United States and for foreign policy in particular. Okay? Right, right. And so, the economy. Yeah, so I mean, you know, to contrast uh, the prior president, Bolsonaro's viewpoints, which were much more aligned with the United States, forget about Democrat or Republican. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah but, please, but yeah. you know, but American foreign policy objectives. Mm -hmm. uh, the, it's, it would be a, a poor assumption on on any fan of international politics to assume that because Bolsonaro, because uh, Lula prevailed, that he's automatically going to, you know, run with the Democratic Party. Exactly. Uh, because our foreign policy objectives have not changed much. Which is? Which is by where? That, by our, you mean yeah, the U.S.? Of course, the U.S. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, in terms of our uh, animosity towards the uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of our uh, even attempts at combating the drug war mm -hmm. in South America, as well as our views regarding China and other power bases around mm -hmm. the world. Okay, uh, let's. Where, go, I'm you know, sorry. Go ahead. No, let's no. start on that. Yeah. So Lula is a Latin American leftist. Correct. Correct. He's not like a moderate Democrat like in our country. He right. is a leftist. That is correct. All right. Yeah. Which means he's been influenced by the socialist revolutions in right. Cuba, in Russia, and in China, I would yeah, guess, Yeah, and, right? doesn't, and doesn't assume that the way out of trouble it's for capitalism. his country is capitalism and, more notably, the United States. Right, exactly. In uh, fact, I would guess that he regards the United States probably as too hegemonic. In, too hegemonic and maybe perhaps through its, uh, its corporate uh, involvement in right. a resource-rich area like Latin America uh, problematic, yes, okay. if anything. Right, exactly. If anything. Yeah. I mean, I think he said so, hasn't he? Right, right. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what his views are with respect to Cuba. Yeah, Even right. I think they're better than <laughs> Bolsonaro. Uh, Bolsonaro. Uh, Cuba's, uh, for a long time, they've had a 
uh, a medical doctor uh, exchange program with a number of developing countries around the world mm -hmm. where the Cubans provide high technical expertise in and med medicine in medicine mm -hmm. uh, in form of doctors as Sandy said and um, the, in exchange for often money sometimes or natural resources right. in the case of Venezuela it was oil, oil. Right. Uh, but in the case of Brazil it was often money so underserved areas in Brazil like the Amazon mm -hmm. uh, had a number of Cuban doctors serving there and in areas where honestly you know they're they just simply didn't have medical help mm -hmm. uh, uh, those you know the indigenous populations that lived in the Amazon uh, many of whom mostly of whom are, are quite poor mm -hmm. uh, they simply didn't have doctors and Bolsonaro canceled the Cuban program and uh, essentially just kicked out all the doctors because without he, replacing right. them with uh, Brazilian doctors or doctors from other countries okay so Lula will probably be more pro Cuba I pro Cuba guess. and it's important to note uh, they're calling this a pink tide yes in yes, in, in Latin right. America because for the first time in a long time you know we there's a leftist leader now in Brazil Ecuador. There's, there's a leftist one in uh, in Ecuador mm -hmm. in Mexico mm -hmm. in Venezuela mm -hmm. and notably in Colombia yeah you know Colombia because Colombia is one of uh, U.S. strongest allies strongest right? allies but a big ally going. on the drug war exactly uh, and during that time the U.S. was able to enjoy right-wing leadership that it was easily able to align with with respect to you know prosecuting the drug war and uh, on, a, on a number of other issues including okay so that's socialism. interesting though so this pink tide yeah. is not going to be perceived as terribly friendly to the United States it will not be no. right by our president right. nor I mean that seems to be the wishes of the Latin American people though because these were elections they weren't placed into power by the military or anything like that these were as far as anybody knows free and fair elections as correct as I mean they're so. right right sure I mean there's always going to be allegations yeah. and there were allegations in this election in Brazil uh, that Lula stole the election because of the time that he was incarcerated uh, it, Brazil not unlike the United States is a 50 50 country mm -hmm. uh, a 50% of the population think he's an absolute crook, mm -hmm. and 50% of the population remember the uh, the boom time between 2003 and mm -hmm. 2010, where 20, 30 million people were lifted out of poverty, and they think he's you know he's, he's a messiah. So uh, he's a Castro, so, right? Yeah, right. So it's a 50-50 split in Brazil mm -hmm. with a legislature that is right wing. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so let's get back to this idea. So one of the things that interests me is this growing block of of seemingly non-aligned countries again right. called BRICS. These are very powerful countries, but they're in yeah. the developing world. Correct? Largely in the developing world. And they're yeah. called BRICS. Okay, right. so explain what's happening in terms of Brazil and BRICS. Well, I think uh, Brazil, with the election of Lula, re-election of Lula, I think it's probably going to firmly take its place on the international stage and in BRICS uh, as being more aligned with the other countries countries that yes. are in BRICS rather than, you know, really making a strong attempt to garner the attention and the affection of the United States. Or, which, or Western Europe. Or Western Europe, which uh, which will probably create an interesting situation uh, in terms of the Russia-Ukraine war right. and as well as a, on a lot of important votes on, in the United Nations. And also in the economy. Of course. I mean, this is going to be kind of an alternate economic block, too. Okay, right. so that's Brazil, as you said. Yeah. Um, sixth largest country in the world. Correct. Russia is right. a lot is in that. Right. India. Right. China. Right. South Africa. Right. And perhaps now Argentina. Perhaps even and Argentina. And I thought even that Saudi Arabia is thinking of it. Okay. Okay. okay? So this is a, a strong economic block of the developing world right. kind of versus Western capitalism. Yeah. Is, is that right or not? That is. Yeah. Now, again, I mean, there are tensions uh, between some of those countries, mm -hmm. too, India and China, for example. Right, of course. So it's, it's not a, a politically ideological block. But economically, you know, it, it certainly is, Sandy. And I think even in, in terms of political ideology, yes. I think there's going to be times where they can actually work together uh, on specific issues. Sure. Yeah, which, which 
they'll align with. And they are ideologically committed together on one thing. What's that? To oppose the hegemony right. of the United States and the other and capitalists. West, and Western and Europe, Western largely. Europe, yeah. Which is really, really interesting yeah. to me. Right. Because that seems to be the world that's on the rise, is the BRICS, the brown, and the black world. Think about, right. think about that. They are all countries yeah. that are uh, dominantly black and brown populations, aren't they? Right, with the exception of Russia, yeah. Well, I mean, no, 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 Russia's also Asia. Russia includes a lot of Asian people. Sure, Mongols, sure. Mongols, Hiles, as Russia is not really a white country. Right. Not really. Well, yeah, I mean, it depends on parts of the country, but yeah. yeah. I mean, the, uh, it, what a lot of these and countries. And India. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these countries, uh, these these countries were formerly, uh, Russia being an exception, uh, were dominated by uh, imperial powers and of this, Western Europe. Right, okay. That is so interesting to me, too, because if anybody would dare to read Putin's one of his last speeches, yeah. of course, nobody ever reads Putin because he's supposedly, he's crazy. quote, crazy. Right. So who America? But I read it. Yeah. And if he... What does that make you? What do you mean? I'm just joking. It makes yeah. me a historian. Right, okay. okay. Right, right. So if you read it, he is yeah. he defends Russia as if Russia is a colony. Correct. As if, because he perceives the uh, the historic attacks on Russia from Napoleon on yeah. as an attempt of the West to conquer Russia for its resources. I'm not saying he's right or wrong. Right. I mean, he, he in his last speech, he was claiming that, you know, Russia historically was a hedge against the imperial powers. Exactly. Yeah. But I, I think some would pr maybe uh, question whether or not Russia in its own unique way was an a imperial power with respect to yeah, but I, I Ukraine know. as well as uh, some other you know yeah. countries the Central Asian countries but without getting into yeah. that argument which is an important argument I'm yeah. not denying that but if you look at it from his point of view and from many Russian points of view and from the third world point of view yeah. Russia the West has always tried from that point of view or the West has always tried to colonize Russia to get after Russia's resources which are vast right okay right so, or to eliminate it. Okay, and Russia never, yeah, sure, but why do they want to eliminate it is because of its resources. Yeah, and I, as a competitor. That's the way yeah. they view it, the Russians. I'm not saying yeah. how I view it. Right. Okay, secondly, that's, I think, the way the third world views Russia also. Yes, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's not something that's taught in history here right. in schools, but uh, when a lot of, you know, People that were very, that are firmly supporting, you know, Ukraine and its and its struggle with uh, with Russia, mm -hmm. uh, they've often been very surprised by the responses from many countries, right. from, uh, developing countries, in terms of the fact that they just assume that, okay, invasion, large country, small country, obviously all these countries are going to line up in favor of Ukraine, and then they they're didn't. surprised, right? But they did not because they don't know the level of assistance, technical behind the scenes as well as out in the open that Russia did provide or the Soviet Union did provide during right. the Cold War. Right. And it's important to note some of these things to get a, a true understanding get an of history. And I agree. I'm always yeah. so surprised that Americans seem to ignore history willfully. I don't think it's taught. I don't think these hope, things are yeah, taught. Maybe. So How come we know uh, I don't blame the American people. I believe no, I you know, what's either. what's being you know that it's that it's certain things aren't taught in a balanced way. And I get it. It's to kind of you know increase the sense of patriotism and uh, exceptionalism. But certain things, certain important facts are ignored, and therefore people are surprised that the the BRICS countries, in many cases, you know, align themselves the way they do. I think it's surprising with all of our talk about racism in this country, some of it right on, of course, that people are not ignoring that it's the white nations right now of Western Europe yeah. that are defending Ukraine. If you look at the black and brown world, yeah. they're not defending Ukraine. They are either neutral and are not implementing sanctions against Russia, yeah. I think that's true of India, yeah. or actively pro-Russia. Yeah, I mean, again, it's, it's complicated because Russia is a major 
major provider of energy. Yes. So some of the some of the reasons are certainly because uh, you know there's a certain uh, uh, nostalgia for the support that they got from you know the the, the former Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. You know between you know 1945 to 1990. Hey, uh, but, the Russians but, during World War II are right. pretty handy. Yeah, but then the other part of it is also, you know, Russia is trying to negotiate cheap oil contracts, yeah. uh, cheap energy. So a lot, a lot of the quote unquote black and brown countries you're referring to, they're keeping their mouths shut because uh, they could possibly get some cheap oil. They're not only they're not just uh. keeping their mouths shut. As a friend of mine told me when he went to Africa recently, yeah. his home country of Cote d'Ivoire, yeah. that they're actively pro Putin. Yeah. And absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that does exist also. Yeah, yeah. because of two things. Because Russia has net, didn't do the slave trade. Correct. Okay, Russia did not colonialize not Africa sense, or no. Latin America. Or Asia, yeah. Or Asia. Well, I and, mean, southern part of Asia. Right, yeah. and they also, during the Cold War, gave assistance a lot. Right. Right. So, right. And, and a lot of, uh, unfortunately, a lot of uh, Americans that are interested in foreign policy issues and world discussions about the world, they you know they don't know that you know it's because it's not taught and it's not re Correct, and, and it's not I, okay. reported on no that I know but part. I wonder I bet you that Lula will be in the same kind of neutral camp on that war but yeah we'll see. We'll, we'll see we'll see yeah he may even you know he may even surprise us and go, come out completely in favor of Russia or I doubt it yeah I doubt it but yeah. he but I bet you he won't take a stand against Russia uh, that remains to be seen but yeah, I I've 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 a suspicion that you're right because Russia also is very aligned with China and in the third world China is also perceived as a help rather uh, rather than a absolutely so. absolutely they don't they China is not viewed the way they're viewed here right exactly. in, the, in the developing world yeah yeah so I think that this is as least as interesting an election as what's happened here in the past right. few days yeah. um, and thank you very much for commenting on it with me Kurt thank you Sandy thank you. for hosting we'll see you in a month right